Hello everybody, how are you? Hello everybody, how are you? It is time to start our day, it is time to work and play. Hello everybody, how are you? How are you guys today? You guys doing good? Let me see your thumbs up if you're doing good. Not so good, really not so good. If your thumbs are down, let's work together to turn them right side up during our time together. We are going to start off today with a story, and it's a silly story, so I hope this helps you turn your thumbs up if they were facing down. This book is called Rhyming Dust Bunnies, and it's so silly. It's about rhyming words. Do you know what rhyming words are? Rhyming words are words that sound the same. So if I said cat, what would you say? Maybe hat, sat, bat, mat. Those are rhyming words. Let's say, oh, on the back. I like that when they do stuff on the front and the back of the book, it says, hey, what rhymes with dust bunnies? Hmm. Bunnies, bunnies rhymes with bunnies. Hello, we are Ed, Ned, Ted, and Bob. We rhyme all the time. Do their names rhyme? Some of them do. Ed, Ned, and Ted rhyme, but Bob doesn't rhyme. Hey, what rhymes with car? Think of some words. Can you tell me? What are some words that rhymes with car? Let's see what these guys said. Far, jar, tar, look. No, Bob. Look does not rhyme with car. What rhymes with bug? What do you guys say? Rug, hug, mug, look out. Oh, Bob. No, Bob. Look out does not rhyme with bug. What rhymes with dog? What do you think of? They said, hog, log, fog. Bob says, look out, here comes a big scary monster with a broom. I don't think Bob gets this game, do you? Bob, no, look out, here comes a big scary monster with a broom. Does not rhyme with anything, really. Okay then, but run for it. Oh no, look, Bob was trying to warn them. Ah! Good call, Bob. Okay, so where were we? What rhymes with cat? Sat, pat, rat, vacuum cleaner. Oh, Bob. They got sucked up in the vacuum. They should learn to listen to Bob. Um, Bob, what rhymes with how do we get out of here? Help! Now they're stuck inside. Even though Bob wasn't rhyming, he was warning, wasn't he? They should have listened to poor Bob. All right, I want to play a rhyming game with you, and you're going to play the game by showing me your thumbs. I'm going to show you two pictures, and if the pictures, the words of the pictures rhyme, thumbs up. If they don't rhyme, thumbs down. Remember, you're looking for sounds, words that sound the same. So let's start with these. Ready? This is a picture of a skate. This is a picture of an eight, a number eight. Eight, skate, skate, eight. They sound the same, don't they? Eight, skate. They end with the same sound, so they are rhyming words. Those are thumbs up on those two. Let's try this one. Ready? I have a picture of a, you tell me, what's this? Duck and a truck. Truck, duck. Do those sound the same? They do have the same ending sound, so those are rhyming words. Another thumbs up. All right, my next one. Let's see a picture of a train and picture of rain. Rain, train. They sound the same, have the same ending sound. Another thumbs up. Well, we have a lot of rhyming ones. How about this one? This is a picture of a star and a picture of a squirrel. Hmm. Everything else had the same ending sounds. Star, squirrel. They don't sound the same. They sound the same at the beginning, don't they? They both have a s sound. They both start with the letter S, but they don't have the same sound at the end. So they are a thumbs down. How about box? Fox. Ox is the ending sound. Box, fox. They both end in the same sound. Yes for rhyming words. How about one more? How about a mouse? And a goat. Mouse, goat, goat, mouse. They don't sound the same. No, nope. thumbs down for those. Those do not rhyme. We are going to do a little rhyme with your 
five fingers. Can you hold up five fingers from one hand? Let's do this together. Okay, you ready? It goes like this. My fingers are so sleepy. It's time they went to bed. First you, baby finger. Put that pinky finger down. Tuck in your little head. Ring man, now it's your turn. Then comes tall man, great. Pointer finger, hurry because it's getting late. Let's see if they're all cozy. Nope, there's one to come. Move over, little pointer. Make room for master thumb. Can you do that again with me? Let's hold them all up. My fingers are so sleepy. It's time they went to bed. First you, baby finger, tuck in your little head. Ring man, now it's your turn. Then comes tall man, great. Pointer finger, hurry up because it's getting late. Let's see if they're all cozy. Nope, there's one to come. Move over, little pointer. Make room for master thumb. Did you hear some rhyming words in that finger play we just did? Let's see. There was bed, head, late, great, come, thumb. Those words all had the same ending sound in that rhyme. Now, I want to share with you some nursery rhymes. You probably know some nursery rhymes already, but I have a special book. Let me show it to you. It's a Mother Goose book. Have you heard of Mother Goose before? Mother Goose is a collection of a whole bunch of different nursery rhymes, and they're all inside of a book together. It's a collection of little rhymes or little poems. And some of them that I'm going to read to you, I'll bet you know. And if you do, you can say them along with me. All right, let's start with this one. And you know what? Some of them, too. You might hear some words that you don't know that are unfamiliar to you, so we'll stop at the ones that are, are not real familiar, and we'll take a look and see what those words were. But first, let me read this one. It's called Little Miss Muffet. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat, who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. All right, I heard some words in there that were unfamiliar. A tuffet. You don't hear that a lot these days, do you? She sat on a tuffet. A tuffet is like a little stool. It's a little thing to sit on. So she was sitting on her tuffet and it said she's eating her curds and whey. So what do you suppose those are? Well, first clue is she was eating them. So it must be food, right? Well, curds and whey are like cottage cheese. So if you've ever eaten cottage cheese, you have also eaten curds and whey like Little Miss Muffet. Now that spider came along, sat down beside her and frightened her. What does that mean to frighten her? means to scare her. Can you make your scariest face? If you were that spider and you wanted to scare her, what kind of face would you make? Would you make a oh, scary face? So she would run off. That was our first nursery rhyme. The second nursery rhyme I want to read to you also involves a spider, and I'll bet you guys know this one. I would love it if you would say it with me, and if you know hand motions to it, you can do those too. You ready? The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain, and the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. Now, I like this one because look at this spider. He came prepared. He's got rain boots on. He's got an umbrella. He's not going to let that little bit of rain stop him. Let's see if there are some rhyming words in there. Did you hear? Climbed up the water, spout, washed the spider out, spout and out. Those rhymed. I think he ever going to stop with that one and try this one next. Oh, this one's going to be a challenge for me. Some nursery rhymes are tongue twisters. A tongue twister is something that's hard to say because most of the words start with the same letter. I'm going to try to say this one slowly and then maybe we can challenge each other and I'll try to say it a little faster and you can do it along with me. You ready? I'll go slow first. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. You hear a lot of p sounds, don't you? A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, how many peppers did Peter Piper pick? Want to try it faster? We'll go just a little bit faster. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, how many peppers did Peter Piper pick? Should I go faster? Yeah, so we do it together. Ready? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter I made a mistake. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, how many peppers did Peter Piper pick? <sighs> that was hard. Did you guys get through it? That was a tough one. All right, that's called a tongue twister again, and those can be a lot of fun. So maybe you can look up some other tongue twisters and try them. You might know this one too. And again, if you know it, say it along with me. You ready? Hey, diddle, diddle. 
Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with a spoon. Now, something that stands out to me in this one is nursery rhymes don't have to make sense. They can be silly. How many times have you seen a cat playing a musical instrument? A fiddle, in this case, is like a violin, if you've heard of that. Or a cow in the sky jumping over the moon? They're just fun, silly things that we say in nursery rhymes. All right, how about another one? I've got a few more I'd like to share with you. This next one is another one that I bet you all know. If you have a baby in your family, you might do this with them. Or when you were younger, you might remember somebody doing it with you. If you remember this one, do the hand motions with me while I read. Pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Pat it and prick it and mark it with a B. And throw it in the oven for baby and me. Very good. So let's see, we had cake twice, that rhymed. We had tea, or excuse me, B and me. Those are our rhyming words there. Just a couple more guys, and then we're gonna do some activities together. This one again, might have some words that are not familiar to you. And you know what, with this one, let me pull over my chalkboard because we're gonna do something actually with this one. I wrote the words for this one on here. We'll come and look at those in a second, but first I want you guys to look at the picture because we're going to use the picture in here to help us understand some of the words we don't know. So, this one is called Old Mother Hubbard. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to fetch her poor dog a bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was there, and so the poor dog had none. So there's some words in there that might not be familiar to you. Let's see. This is Old Mother Hubbard. Okay, there she is. It says she went to the cupboard. What do you think a cupboard is? You can look closely at the picture. What do you think a cupboard is? It's like a cabinet. Do you see the, oops, excuse me. It's like a cabinet right over there. It says to fetch her poor dog a bone. What does that mean? When you throw a ball and tell your dog to fetch it, it means that they're gonna go get it and bring it back to you. So old mother Hubbard went to this cupboard to fetch, to go get her dog a bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare. Bear. Does that mean like a great big grizzly bear? No, this is a different kind. Look at the shelves and maybe that's your clue. They're empty, aren't they? That's what this kind of bear means. She didn't have anything in her kitchen to give to the poor dog. And so the poor dog had none. Poor guy. He had nothing. Now, like I said, I wrote it down here because I want to look at something. Let's take a good look at the rhyming words in this one. This one had some good ones. Let's read it together. It says, Old Mother Hubbard went to the Hubbard. There's our first rhyming word. Hubbard. Covered. Those rhyme, don't they? To fetch her poor dog a bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare. Did you hear the rhyming words? When she got there, the cupboard was fair. And so the poor dog had none. Poor puppy dog. He had nothing to eat. So when you're listening to nurse rhymes, try to find those rhyming words. They're kind of fun to catch on to. Dr. Seuss, if you read a Dr. Seuss books, he has a lot of rhyming words, but like nursery rhymes, I said they're kind of silly and they don't always make sense. A lot of his rhyming words aren't real words, but that's okay. It's fun to make up words and rhyming words that don't mean anything. It just is kind of a fun thing to do to listen to that sound. All right, guys, this next one I chose for a reason. As I read it, see if you can guess what the reason is. It's called Jack and Jill. There's your clue, Jack and Jill. Why do you think I chose it? because I'm Jill. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. There was that word fetch again. We learned that that meant going to get it. They were going up the hill to fetch a pail of water. They went to a well to get their water. Poor Jack though, he falls down and he breaks his crown, whether they means his head or if he actually was wearing a crown. And tumbling means Jill came rolling down the hill after him. Okay, I want you guys to help me put that story in order. That's the next, next activity we're gonna do. Let me grab mine here. I've got five pictures. Let's see what they all are. Here we have Jack and Jill, they're walking up the hill. Here's Jack at the bottom. Here's Jack rolling down the bottom. Here they are getting water. And here's Jill rolling down. Do you remember the order that that story went in? Let's see, what happened first? It says Jack and Jill went up the hill. So let's see, Jill coming down, 
getting the water. Jack coming down. Jack down. Oh, here we go. Number one. Jack and Jill went up the hill. There we go. To fetch a pail of water. So let's see. Look at the pictures. Which one is fetching water? That would be this one. This is a well where they're getting their water out of. Okay, but what happened next? That's when Jack fell down. Here he is. He's rolling down the hill. That was third. And broke his crown. Here he is at the bottom. And then what happened at the end? And Jill came tumbling after. There she goes. So we put that story in order. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Now you guys say it with me. Ready? Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown. And Jill came tumbling after. Nice job putting that in order, guys. Okay, I have one more. And with that, I have one more activity. And then I've got a couple activities for you guys to do at home. Let me switch that out of our way here. I bet this last one you guys have heard too. Let's see if you can tell by the picture. Do you know which one this is? Look at that picture. Which one do you think that is? It's Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Poor Humpty. So here's the first challenge that I have for you. I have some blocks here. Let's see if I can do it right here. I am going to try to make a wall for Humpty to sit on. Let's see. I want my wall to be tall. So I have a wall here. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that's a tall wall. I hope my wall stays. Let me get, I have Humpty. Let's see what happens when I put Humpty on my wall. Do you think he's gonna, let's predict. Is he gonna sit on my wall? Is he gonna fall off my wall? What's gonna happen to Humpty? Let's find out, ready? Here he goes. Oh, Humpty fell. What do you think I could do to keep Humpty from falling? Well, how can I make this work so Humpty doesn't fall? That's my first challenge for you. Can you make a wall that Humpty won't fall off of? Can you find a way to make your Humpty stay on the wall? I wonder what you can do. I want you to think about that. You don't have to use blocks. You can come up with other ways to make a wall. Make your own wall. See if you have, if you don't have an egg, what else do you have that's kind of like an egg? Maybe some kind of ball or something. And see if you can get Humpty to stay on the wall. That's the first challenge I have for you when you leave me today. The second one. I want you to think about the nursery rhymes we read, and maybe you have another one that's a favorite. And I want you to change it. I want you to pick one and change how it goes or change the ending. Now, I did mine already, and I want to share it with you. I did this in my journal that we have. I picked Jack and Jill, you know, because of Jill, and I changed the ending. In my version, in my story, instead of Jill coming down tumbling after Jack, Jill nicely walks down the hill, she gives Jack a hand, and she helps him up. That's how I changed Jack and Jill. It doesn't rhyme anymore, but I like that ending a little bit better. So I've got two things I'm sending you guys away with. I want you to make a wall for Humpty and see if you can get Humpty to stay on your wall without falling off. And I want you to pick any nursery rhyme, whether it's one we read or one that you know that we didn't read, and change it a little. Maybe you could change some of the rhyming words to be a little sillier. Maybe you could change the ending of it and draw a picture of whatever you changed it to be. This was so fun. I hope if your thumbs down at the beginning, I hope they're now thumbs up. I hope you guys have a great day. Go off and make some rhyming words and have some fun doing your challenges. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.